Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode 55 and I want to welcome you to this place. If you're a first time viewer, thank you so much for checking me out. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for sticking with me and for continuing to watch. For those who are Patreon subscribers of the show, thank you, especially to you for keeping the show on the air week after week. There will be a new episode of Wool and Spinning Radio coming out in the next week or so for those who are Patreon subscribers. So stay tuned for that and watch your inbox for the notification. I have a little bit of housekeeping and it's only to say thank you to all of you who were previous Fiber Club and Workshop subscribers. Those tiers have officially been deleted, but if you have not gone into Patreon and edited your pledge, you will notice that you were charged for February. Please head over and edit your stuff down if you do not want to pledge at that level anymore. Patreon allows me to delete tiers, but it doesn't allow me to delete your pledges and your support. So if you would like to go in and edit, please do so and let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. I have some spins in progress today. I have some whips, uh, some knitting whips, and I have a couple of skeins of that are finished, um, That one of which is part of our color studies, which is something that we are working on in the Ravelry group. It's ongoing. It is sponsored by Farm Fairy Fiber here in British Columbia. She's in uh, Pitt Meadows. So I have another skein of that that I have uh, spun up this past week and have to share with you and show you. So I'm excited about that. Some of you, if you saw the last couple of weeks episodes, you saw me prepping that spin and I'm really excited to show you the finished yarn. So let's jump right in. So for spins in progress, I actually have three, but one of them, four, but I, one of them I can't really show you because it's over here on my match list and it's, I'll show you the fiber. <laughs> Because I'm spinning it um, across the top, which is not one of my favorite techniques, and I'll talk about that in a moment because that's also how I'm spinning one of my other projects right now. But this is West Coast Color and Carding, although I think she might call herself West Coast Color now, just to keep it simple. This is my friend Lynn Anderson who lives just up in the Okanagan here in British Columbia. This is her PMS base, which is Polworth Mohair and Silk, Yearling Mohair actually. It's incredibly soft. It's slightly longer stapled. Uh, which I really like because of the Polworth rather than it being mixed with a Merino and it is locally blended and carded and it's actually spinning more like combed top. I spun some of this recently which had some red in it and some gray and white and I knit that big infinity cowl and this was the other stuff that was in my stash and I really love this base. I love the colors on it um, because of the silk content it's quite vibrant mohair takes up dye beautifully as well and so um, it's it's just a really soft lovely spin and the mohair gives it sort of a halo effect that you probably can't see on the video but you'll be able to see in photos that I share and sorry I have something in my eye and I um, I'm really enjoying this so I just started this yesterday and I'm already I split the top vertically once so I had two nests of this to spin and I've already spun through the first one so I'm basically like 50 grams into the spin and now this is the second 100 grams. So I'm doing this on my match list on a very high ratio. Um, I think I'm spinning at 22 and a half to one, which even for me is a high ratio to spin on. But the reason why I'm doing that is because for every time my foot is going, is de depressing and my drive wheel is going around one rotation, I'm actually doing short forward draft and I'm drafting forward three times. So for every one revolution of the drive wheel, I'm spinning forward three times. So that's sort of putting a roughly seven twists per inch into the yarn. So it's creating this really soft spun singles. And then my plan is to spin it back quite, um, not severely, not as firmly as I normally do, because I want to preserve some of that softness. Um, but I might, maybe, <laughs> I might use this yarn uh, for a weaving project. I'm not sure. So if I do, I will apply it quite firmly so that it can withstand the abrasion of uh, weaving. So we will see. Um, so that's something that's what I'm working on. The other thing that I'm working on, which is also on my wheel, so I thought that I would share it next. This is some deep stash. It's in my spin the bin for 2017. It's yarn ink, which is based in Calgary. Um, this is a superwash merino, four and a half, four point four ounces. And she says it's a uh, 22 micron merino. It says that it's superwash. Sorry, the mohair is making my nose itchy. 
I'm not sure this is Superwash. Um, I bought this quite a number of years ago. Um, and just from the way that it feels and it's been compacted quite badly in my stash because it was braided for the last three years. And so when I went to pull it apart, it was quite compacted and quite, um, it didn't have that bounce and sprawling that you would expect top to have. Um, and it's because it was so tightly, um, braided. So it was, um, uh, yeah, it was just too tightly braided and it had been in my stash like that for quite a long time. So you can even see like where it was, where the braid was, cause it was actually like, it's actually compacted the worst in those areas where it's quite, um, quite a bit narrower than the rest of the top, I guess you could say. I'm having a tough time, um, organizing my words around this because if, I hadn't have already started spinning this, I probably would have thrown it on my drum carter to open it up and tried to preserve the color and broken it up by pink and yellow. And it progresses from the yellow down to this gorgeous gray brown. And I, so I probably would have like preserved that and done a bunch of nests in that. And then same with this sort of very soft minty green that's at the end. And I maybe would have carted all these separate nests up and then preserved the gradient. And probably there we go that's the gradient so I maybe would have preserved the gradient by carting it up but because I've already got one nest one one bobbin done which I put over here it's kind of too little too late so I'm spinning this across the top as well Considering how compacted it is, um, I'm surprised at how even my spinning is, and this is gonna be a two-ply sport weight. I am putting quite a bit of twist into the singles, um, and I am gonna ply with quite a bit of ply twist, and I am for sure gonna weave with this to see what it comes up as, because I'm gonna do the warp uh, woven, uh, sorry, the warp will be um, the gradient, so it'll go from the, the green across to the pink. And then I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for my weft yet. I might actually just do some white. Um, and I have a whole bunch of uh, white in my yarn stash and I might just put that with it and see what happens. It'll be a very soft, very muted um, scarf or stole. But it would be a great way to showcase the yarn without um, ruining the gradient. Cause I'm not sure that I would wear these colors. Although I do, you guys know if you followed me for a while, how much I love this okra yellow and this um, gray brown those are two of my absolute most favorite colors which is what drew me to the um fiber in the first place but i think the reality is it was just in my stash for too long and it was um just too compacted and i have another braid of this in my stash that is part of my bin as well and i'm hoping that i can do the fiber prep a little bit differently so that um, spinning it isn't quite as laborious as this has been. I will say for spinning across the top when you're first learning and you have a slightly compacted braid of fiber, I have actually found that it is a little tiny bit easier to learn because when you're doing your short forward, there's that little bit of, um, the fiber doesn't draft forward quite as easily and quite as quickly. And so when you're learning how to draft across uh, how to spin across the top which is where you take your comb top and you work your way across the top literally in like a zigzag motion so that you're not losing any of the color and it the nice thing about spinning across the top is you can do that and preserve this big long repeat of color um, instead of stripping it down and stripping it down and if I had done that and spun all the nests one after another I would have lost the gradient so when your fiber is a little bit compacted, you can often draft forward quite consistently because it takes a little bit more oomph on your part and a little bit more strength to draft forward because everything's a little bit compacted. So I, when I first learned how to spin across the top, that's actually what I did was I spun on some slightly compacted fiber and I learned it, it, I mean, it's definitely a skill and it takes a long time to learn. And I have some tips and tricks that I like to use and that will be coming up in a future video. But um, I definitely think it is a way to learn how to spin across the top and be successful. However, I am also spinning across the top on this fiber and 
this isn't compacted at all and it's very fresh in terms of like it's been dyed recently and it hasn't been sitting in my stash for very long and it's just lovely and it's drafting beautifully and I'm not fighting with it and it makes the experience so enjoyable and I want to work on it and I have a whole second braid of this and that will go to the second bobbin and then the two will be plied together so I'll have over eight ounces finished when I spin all this up whereas this I can't wait till it's done so it's sort of a different feeling of like um of labor intensity and both are beautiful spins both are beautiful colors I love both of these dyers and what they do um but it is um important not to stash our fiber too too long because it does start to it doesn't spoil but I think you have to start thinking about how you're storing it it's like yarn you wouldn't store yarn in a really tightly wound ball for a really super long time because it'll lose some of its bounce and sprawling and twist and you have to rewash it to kind of get that to reactivate and then reskein it and then reball reskein it wash it and then reball it it's the same with fiber the longer it rests for and the longer it sits for it a lot of that air will come out i can't remember who it was and i feel like it was classy squid or what's her username her name Classy, I know people are yelling at the screen right now because they know who I'm talking about, but she did a whole thing about um, fresh bats. And fresh bats are where you buy the carded fiber, for example. Um, so bats are carded. So you buy the carded fiber and the idea is that she would make them and ship them immediately. And it was called a fresh bat because it still had all that air and all that sprawling and poof in it. And the longer you store that stuff for, the less air it has in it and the more it becomes compacted. And it gets, of course, it gets piled up on underneath lots of other fiber and lots of other stuff gets, and it just slowly gets more, less and less and less airy. So she was sort of doing this thing to educate people about, you know, like use this stuff and, and like experiment with it because you'll get much airier, poofier yarns. And um, this is definitely sort of a good a good reminder for me that uh, using this stuff it's great to have a stash and all but it's also really great to use stuff up so that you can enjoy the spin and it doesn't get quite so compacted oh got stuff in my eye I have two spindle spins in progress they are going incredibly slowly so instead of showing them to you today I'm actually going to insert a video of my one project here and I'm also going to insert a couple of photos of the other one here and I'm going to talk about them next week because one of them I have a little bit of finished yarn here but the spin is only half done so I will talk about it next week and um, spindle spins for me tend to be very time consuming they take a lot of time I tend to take them with me when we're going somewhere so um, they're some of my favorite spins and some of my favorite yarns, but I'll share that for next week. I have a sweater that I cast on and this is out of my Kramer Yarns Merino Alpaca that I've been working on for quite a long time. This was part of that yarn that I spun as singles and then I wasn't sure if I was going to two ply it or three ply it and I ended up two plying it and then I over dyed. It's a dark brown color. The original fiber was this dark dark brown merino alpaca roving. And I over dyed it with logwood and I talked about this on the podcast at some point and I'll see if I can find the episode that I talked about. Um, and I just, I just love this yarn. I, there is just something about it that I just love. And so I decided after thinking about it for many months that I was going to cast on for, I have enough yarn or, and I could make more yarn to do a full sweater, but I thought that what I would probably wear the most right now because I'm having trouble with layering and I'm having trouble with this whole handmade wardrobe thing and being more intentional about my choices. What I would actually wear is a vest and I had seen this vest a long time ago. And I did eventually decide to buy the book and I don't generally buy pattern books and I don't generally buy pattern collections, but I don't know what it is about Carrie and her stuff. I just love it. 
And so I actually bought three books and they're all sweaters that I am going to be working on over the course of 2017. And the first one that I'm doing is the Shoreline Vest and this was part of her Swoon Mane. I bought the book at my local yarn shop at 88 Stitches here in Walnut Grove. And um, for those local, you know what shop I'm talking about. Sue is just awesome. Anyways, this is what I'm working on and I am actually just up the ribbing. I finished the ribbing and I have started the short row shaping. And there's quite a number of short rows to work before you can carry on. But the nice thing is they're my favorite, favorite short rows. Um, it, it uses Japanese short rows or Carol Sunday's short rows. And so here are all my stitch markers going in so far. And I'm just working my way across and hopefully I'll have that done next week and I'll be on to the just knitting straight for the body. I got gauge um, the first time with the called for needle size, which is 3.75 millimeter needles. I have no idea what that is in US sizing. Um, US size five needles. And I think this might be the fav my favorite, my most favorite thing I have knit for a very long time. Like I'm actually waking up in the morning wanting to work on it, which is huge. So um, I'm really enjoying that and I love the logwood. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that it, a lot, this is rubbing off on my finger <laughs> um, and it's leaving these marks uh, on my finger. So a couple of people at work were asking me what was wrong with my finger and if I had actually injured it because it's purple. So I had to say, no, no, it's my yarn. And they all laughed at me because they know that I'm such a crazy knitter. So anyways, this is, I'm just loving this. The yarn has a beautiful drape, beautiful texture. Um, and I think as a vest, I will wear it a lot. So it means I also don't have to spin any more yarn because um, I'll have enough for the vest, which is great. All right, Nora is calling me. So I'm just gonna pause and make sure that she's okay. And then I'll be back. So color studies. I have, oh, before I go on, um, Nora's in the room, so there might be some background noise. Also, um, I finished my Sweet Georgie Yarn spin for January of, 20, of this month, 20, 2017. So if you're interested in learning more about this spin, please head over to the Sweet Georgie Yarns blog. Um, Katrina spun this month as well, and we shared our um, the differences in how we spun it. And it's quite interesting to see the color play of how she spun hers and how I spun mine. So definitely head over there and have a look at what um, our reflections were about this month's spin. Okay, color studies. So for those who've been following along in the Ravelry group and on the color studies thread and also on this uh, podcast since the new year, every week, although I didn't share last week, but mo most weeks I've been sharing a spin every week of what I've been doing with color studies. So the last couple of weeks I've been prepping this spin and I took the a quarter of the braid of the summer colorway and I carded it up and I threw in a whole bunch of stuff, just all different stuff from my stash. And it was all these little bits and pieces of stuff that I had left over. I threw in silk noil, I threw in other fibers, I threw in thread, I threw in pulled sari silk, I threw in sparkle and glitter and Angelina and Firestar, like you name it, I threw it in. And this is the results and I absolutely love it. So what ended up happening and when you look at the yarn really super closely you can see hints of the pink in it and i did throw in mauve and purple and dark blue as well the overall feel of the yarn is a green sort of a greeny gray color and there is yellow in there do you want to say something nora do you want to say what you think about the yarn i'm going to keep talking okay so it's very textured because it's for the podcast let me finish okay sweetie so what ended up happening was it's very very textured um and it's got lots of interest and there's lots of things to look at i'm really curious to see what it looks like knit up and um, the sparkle in it because i put in an absolute ton of sparkle it's really quite eye-catching the yarn has an underlying gray tone or almost like a muddy tone and that's because i put in so many colors and then the color that was the most prevalent which was the blue green and the the green from the original braid and then blue and yellow that i put in in the scrap fiber when i carded it all up the overall feel of the braid of the yarn is green but it definitely has sort of an underlying muddy color almost a gray color from mixing all of those colors on the color wheel 
what I love about it is that it's interesting and it has um of the stuff that I've spun thus far this is definitely by far my favorite skein you guys know how much I love blending on my drum carter anyways and how much I love these sort of gray off colors anyhow. I love taking opposite colors on the color wheel and blending them together to get that muddy browny gray that, that is sort of a new color. Um, and so I think that I might actually do a little bit more of this with the colors that I have left over and I'm going to throw in even more pinks and purples and see if I can get it even more brown and see if then those these two skeins would actually work well together. So I will keep you posted on how that goes. Um, I put in purple um, threads and it's funny because the purple against the green because they're complements it really makes the skein pop and it makes it really interesting. So I'm curious to see what this looks like knit up. If you will remember back at the beginning of the year and it may have even been no, it wasn't in December because I only had the two shows in December. So it would have been right at the beginning of January. I talked about my hand spun blanket that I've just started called Sunny Spread. And it uses front post double crochet to create these. They look like suns. Each of those centers are using way too much hand spun yarn. And I'm thinking that I'm going to scrap the project because I'm actually having to spin more yarn to complete one sun because it's just taking so much yarn and I actually calculated it's taking up between 30 and 40 yards of yarn per sun. So I'm actually going to knit the pop blanket by Tin Can Knits instead. And I'm going to put these yarns that I'm creating for the color study into that blanket, these carded ones, I mean. Um, and I'm hoping that that'll mean that I can get several, um, squares out of them because I just absolutely love what they look like and I'd really like to see what they look like knit up. So uh, stay tuned for that because maybe I'll have one done for next week and I can show it to you. I would love to continue seeing what you guys are doing with your color studies. Please get into the Ravelry group, take photos, share, ask questions. Miriam has done an awesome, um, she's done some fractals with her. She did a combo spin with hers. Um, Becca did a really cool thick and thin yarn to really get the pink to pop, which was an idea that she got off of my friend Diana's blog, which is 100milewear.com. Um, and that looked amazing. She also did a fractal with her sunset. I think it was, yeah, it was the sunset colorway. She did a two ply fractal and then a three ply and she did this gorgeous cowl. So definitely head into the Ravelry group and see what people are doing with their colorways because people are doing some really cool stuff. Um, the sunset colorway is um, more like what I would call a complement. It's not really a true split complement because it's yellow and blue, but the colorway, the, the yarn that people are spinning and the, and the results are really cool. So I hope that you'll join us in there. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I think that's all I have time to talk about this week. I have a couple other things that I'm working on and things that I've just started and I'm going to save it for next week. So have a wonderful fiber filled weekend and until next time, happy spinning. Bye everyone.